In this example, we're going to manipulate the values of two variables to change the number of solutions to a linear system of equations. Here we have three equations and three unknowns. The twist is that the third equation contains two variables, lambda and mu, which we can freely choose. We want to choose values for lambda and mu such that the system has no, one, and infinite solutions. Normally, I'd ask you to pause the video and review the conditions we must satisfy to have zero, one, and infinite solutions. But for part A, you can actually deduce an answer from common sense. The first row of equations reads 2x plus 3y plus 5z equals 9. The third row reads 2x plus 3y plus lambda z equals mu. Remember that we can choose what lambda and mu are. If we pick lambda equals 5, then the coefficients of the first and third equations are uniform. That means if mu equals anything other than 9, we will have no solution. Think about it this way. All of these equations represent planes in the 3D space. The first row is a plane where all the points on the plane sum to 9. If mu does not equal 9, then we're saying that this row is a plane where all the points sum to whatever mu we pick. Assuming mu is not 9, the first row and the third row represent parallel planes that are vertically offset from each other. Because they're parallel, they obviously will never intersect and we won't have a solution. Once we jump into MATLAB, we'll draw these planes so that you can get a visual representation. I like to plot as much as possible because I'm a visual learner. Speaking of which, let's confirm our common sense answers using the fancy linear algebra definitions. From the linear algebra intro video, we know that the system is inconsistent if the rank of A does not equal the rank of the augmented matrix, A tilde. On the other hand, the system is consistent if the ranks are equal. A consistent system has a unique solution if the rank of A equals n, and infinite solutions if the rank of A is less than n. Let's code this in MATLAB. Here we are in the skeleton script file linked in the video description. This is mostly completed because it does some decently advanced stuff. Right off the bat, we have a switch statement. We never formally learned about switch statements, so let me take a minute to quickly explain what it does and how it works. A switch statement is pretty similar to an if-else block. It executes a set of code from several choices. A switch statement is typically easier to read than a bunch of daisy-chained ifs and elses. In our problem, we will make three sets of lambda and mu depending on how many solutions result from our choices. I'm using a switch statement to neatly organize our choices of lambda and mu. After the switch keyword, we have the variable part, which we define for now as the character a. Inside the switch block, we have three cases. Depending on what the variable part holds, the value of lambda and mu will be set accordingly. When part is set to a as it is right now, the values of lambda and mu will be set to whatever we fill in here. When we change the part to b, lambda and mu will be assigned to the values we give here. And finally, when we change part to c, the values of lambda and mu will take on whatever values we give it in the case c block. Down here, we have an fprintf statement with an interesting looking escape sequence. Basically, this fprintf statement will print the Greek letters lambda and mu, which need to be printed in a very specific way using something called Unicode. Unicode assigns nearly every written character in the world in nearly every language to what is basically an ID number. The backslash x represents an escape sequence which tells MATLAB that we're using Unicode. The 3bb is the ID number for the Greek letter lambda, and 3bc is the ID letter for mu. I won't get into it any more than this, but I'll leave some links in the video description if you're interested. Just know that this line will actually print the Greek letters lambda and mu. Now we just said that if lambda equals 5 and mu does not equal 9, we will have no solution. Let's fill this in in the proper case block of the switch statement. We're free to choose mu, so I just arbitrarily set it to 20. Let's add a breakpoint and run it just so we can see what happens. The switch statement successfully assigned the correct values to lambda and mu, which we can see in the fprintf output in the command window. Now let's check the existence of solutions. To do so, we need to form a and a tilde. Next, we need to compute the ranks.
The is consistent variable is a logical which compares the ranks of a and a tilde. It's used to determine which fprintf statement will be printed. We can see that the ranks are unequal, which confirms that the system is inconsistent. If we row reduce the A matrix, we'll uncover a linearly dependent column. Let's continue filling out the script, even though our current choices of lambda and mu don't yield any solutions. Here, we obtain the number of columns in the A matrix and use it in this nested if-else block to determine if we have one or infinite solutions. If we only have one solution, we compute it via the backslash operator. We also print it using another fprintf statement. The last chunk of code creates and plots the row and column interpretation. Read through this if you wish, but I don't expect you to understand it unless you want to copy it for your own educational purposes. The command window output confirms that we have no solution from the linear algebra perspective, but the plots really indicate why that is. On the left, we have the column interpretation. It's really hard to gauge that we can't form the B vector just from looking at each individual column vector, but I'm including it for completeness. The row interpretation tells us the whole story. The blue and green planes represent the first and third rows of our A matrix, respectively. We can see that they're parallel, just like we predicted. Even though the red plane cuts through both the blue and the green planes, the blue and the green planes themselves will never meet. Therefore, we have no solution. What if the blue and the green planes were actually the same plane? That would mean the red plane intersects both planes simultaneously, and a line of intersection would give us infinite solutions to the system of equations. To make the blue and the green planes overlap, we can keep lambda equals 5, but change mu to 9. That way, the first and third rows of the equations we have are identical. Upon changing the part variable to C, the code adjusted the values of lambda and mu respectively. We can see that the blue and green planes now overlap entirely. We actually don't see the blue plane, but that's just a visual quirk. It's there on the plot, but it's completely obscured by the green plane because the green plane was plotted after the blue plane. This line represents all the solutions we can possibly have. Now let's look at the column interpretation. Because the blue and green vectors represent the same plane, they're pretty much interchangeable and we can pretty much express any of these three vectors in terms of the other two. That's why there are infinite ways we can create the B vector just from the three constituent vectors. Finally, the command window output does the heavy math stuff for us, and we can numerically confirm our findings. By now, we found values for lambda and mu, which create no solutions and infinite solutions. But what if we only want one solution? That means all three planes must be different enough such that they only intersect at one location. For the column interpretation, that means we must find three unique vectors which linearly combine to form b. Well, if we need all three planes to be different, then we have a lot of flexibility to choose lambda and mu. As long as lambda does not equal 5, the third equation represents a completely different plane than the other two, so that should suffice. It doesn't actually matter what mu we choose as long as lambda does not equal 5. If you fiddle with the viewing angle on your own computer, you can clearly see three sets of intersections between two different planes. For example, we can see the intersection between the blue plane and the green plane here, and we can see the intersection between the red plane and the green plane here. The intersection of all three intersections occurs at a single point denoted by the black star. This point represents the unique solution to our system. We can see it's unique based on the ranks of A and A tilde, and the rank of A compared to the number of columns in A. It turns out that there's only one way to form the B vector from the constituent vectors. To do so, you can multiply each vector by the corresponding entry in the solution vector. I'll paste a screenshot of it right up here on the screen and include the code to make the figure in the video description. To summarize, we explored the values of two variables which change the number of solutions in the given system of equations. 
We also saw how the linear algebra definitions and the geometric interpretations can help us confirm our answers. I especially hope this demonstrated the power of plotting, even with fairly complex 3D planes. I strongly encourage you to play around with this code to further explore other values of lambda and mu, and to get a sense of how to plot things in 3D. See you next time.